We're going to go on today to 11.3. And that'll be the last thing that we do today or um, this week as far as lessons go. We're going to start to review after that. So we're going to skip section 11.4. And we'll have the test this Friday. Now, you can actually take the test up until Monday morning. But we'll, we'll review the entire week after today. And um, the test can be taken anytime from Friday to Sunday evening, Monday morning. Okay, so today limiting reactants is a subject. Let me give you an example of this before we go any further. So say you have a campfire. You're burning wood. No, it's supposed to be a fire. This will use your imagination. All right, so you have a fire to try to draw. And then you have wood. Now, over time, the fire will go out when the wood goes away. So this reaction is a reaction between wood and oxygen. That's what, when we see fire, that's what we're seeing. We're seeing the reaction between wood and oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water vapor. So these are our two reactants, wood and oxygen. If either of these runs out, the reaction stops, in which case the fire goes out. So if you either remove the wood or the oxygen, the fire will go out. So if you were over time, the wood will go away, the fire goes out because of that, in which case the wood would be limiting. Now, if instead I were to put, you know, say a dome over this, you know, it'd be an airtight dome. In that case, I, I'm limiting the oxygen. So there'd still be plenty of wood but not enough oxygen. So once the oxygen runs out, the fire goes out. So that's how you can stuff out a flame. You know, you, you can put a covering over, sorry. I can't um, get that off of my computer. So. Um, so you can stuff out the flame by putting a covering over. You know, you can put a blanket over um, a flame. You can put a cup over a flame. Anything that removes the oxygen from the flame will make it go out. So you're limiting one reactant, the reaction will stop, the fire goes out. Let's look at this reaction. H2 plus O2 goes to form H2O. Okay, so now it's balanced. So let's say we have one mole of each. We have one mole of H2, we have one mole of O2. They're gonna ask you this question for homework, which one is limiting? So let's think about the mole ratios here. What does it say? For every two moles of H2, you need one mole of O2 to react with it. So what do we have in here? We have one mole of each. That's what we've been given. So what that would mean is that H2 would run out first. Because whenever you have a O2, you need twice that of H2 for it to run completely. So what would happen instead is 0.5 moles of O2 would be used. And all of the moles of H2 would be used. 1.0 moles of H2 would be used. So you'd have O2 in excess. Because we have one mole to work with. We only need, one, we only need 0.5 moles of O2 to run the reaction. 
So H2 is limiting, it runs out first. O2 is excess, there's some left over at the end of the reaction. Let's say instead that we have this, we have two moles of O2 or H2 reacting with one mole of O2. Which one's limiting here? Well, they both run at the same time. Because the recipe calls for, for every one mole of O2, we need two moles of H2. And that's what we have exactly in this example. So they're both limiting. Now, if instead we had say three moles of H2 and still one mole of O2, what happens here? So we need, for every one mole of O2, we need twice that of H2 for it to run. So if we have one mole of O2, we only need two moles of H2 for it to run completely. But we have three moles. So we're gonna have extra H2 left over at the end of the reaction. So O2 limits, in this case, and H2 is excess. Because we only need two moles of H2 to, to work with one mole of O2. So we'd use two moles of H2 and have one left over at the end. But all the O2 would be used up, so O2 is limiting. Are you with me so far in this? Let's go through another example. Okay, so this reaction S8 reacts with four moles of Cl2 to produce four moles of S2Cl2. If we had one mole of each substance, which one is limiting, the S8 or the Cl2? Well, this says that we need four times the Cl2 that we have of the S8. So if we have one mole of S8, we would need four moles of Cl2 to react completely with all of the S8. But we don't have that. We only have one mole of Cl2. So this one is limiting. That one runs out first. So whatever we have of this, we would need one fourth of that of S8. So if we have one mole of Cl2, the mole ratio says that we would need one fourth that of S8. For every four moles of Cl2, we need one mole of S8. So we do one divided by four, we get 0.25 moles of Cl2 needed in this reaction. Did you have a question, Robert? Yeah, so is it always the larger one that's gonna be limited? That's a good question. Um, not necessarily. So it would depend. Uh, do you mean the larger one as far as this coefficient in front right here? Uh, yep. Yeah, um, not always. Because you know, if we have equal amounts, then yes. But we wanna have equals, equal amounts of moles. You know, We could have, say, eight moles of Cl2 and one mole of S8, in which case S8 would be limiting. So it doesn't always follow that if this is larger than this one, that this one is limiting. It depends on the mole ratio, which we get from here, as well as what we've been given the problem. So the amounts could vary a lot. It just depends on what we've been given. In this 
example, though, the number of moles is equal, in which case, yes, the larger number would be limiting. But there's other examples that we're going to see where the number of moles will be different, in which case it won't be clear which one is limiting. So what we see on here is that we only would need 0.25 moles of S8 to react completely with one mole of Cl2. So you'd have 0.75 moles of S8 in excess in this situation. Okay, so you look so far at moles and it's not too hard to see in, in those situations which was limiting but you might be given grams instead of moles, and that's going to be a little bit harder to see which one is limiting. So let's say we've been given 100 grams of S8 and 100 grams of Cl2. And the question um, is the same, which one is limiting? Well, we just can't tell by looking at this reaction right now because these are not in moles. So we have to convert these to moles to start with before we could tell which one's limiting. So we take 100 grams of S8 and convert it to moles. So 256.5 grams per mole of is um, grams per mole of S8. Grams cancel out. So we do 100 divided by 256.5, and we get point. 7797 moles of S8. Do the same thing for CL2. So we have 100 grams of CL2. And there are 70.91 grams per mole of CL2. So do 100 divided by 70.91, we get 1.41 moles of Cl2. So at this point now, we can compare moles to moles, and we can determine which one's limiting. There's two ways we can do this. I'll just erase all this so it's less confusing. Okay, so there was a question about how I got 256.5. Um, so sulfur's atomic mass, if you're looking at the table, would be 32 grams per mole. And there's S8, so there's eight sulfur. So I do eight times 32 to get the molar mass of S8. Okay, so what we have on here is 0.7797 moles of S8 reacting with 1.41 moles of Cl2. Which one runs out first? So it's a one to four ratio. So we can do this a couple of ways. Um, what I do is I say, OK, well, if for every one mole of S8, I need four moles of Cl, I'll multiply what I have of S8 times four and see what that equals. So I'll take 0.7797, multiply it by 4, and see what that gives me. So that equals 3.118 moles. So what that tells me is that I would need 3.118 moles of Cl2 to react completely with 0.7797 moles of S8. But I don't have that. I only have 1.4 moles of Cl2. So because I don't have 3.118 moles of Cl2, then I know that Cl2 must be limiting because it's not a 4 to 1 ratio. I don't have four times the amount of Cl2 that I have of S8, which I need according to this ratio right here. So based on this, I know that Cl2 is limiting. Uh, 
Um, so that's how I approach it, but there's other ways to approach it too besides that. Let me show you another way you can think of this. Okay, so we can do is make up a ratio and we know that the ratio would be four moles of Cl2 for every one mole of S8. And what we actually have is 1.41 moles of Cl2 for every 0.7797 moles of S8. So if I were to reduce this, I would have you know, four over one or just four. So if this side doesn't equal four, if it's less than four, then I know that CL2 must be limiting. So what I'll do is I'll do 1.41 divided by 0.7797 and see what that gives me. So when I divide those two, let's write over here and make it more clear, it's 1.8. So I did 1.41 divided by 0.7797, I got 1.8, which is a lot less than what I needed, which was four. So because this actual molar ratio that I've been given is less than what I needed, then that means that Cl2 must be the limiting reactant. This must be smaller than what I need. Now, if it was the reverse, if I got a number, say, like eight, then that means that the denominator must be too small. So if this number is smaller than what I need, the numerator is limiting. So if it's too small, the numerator is limiting. And again, just the reverse, um, if this were too large, then we would say that the denominator limits. So if this number were above four, then we'd say that S8 would be limiting. Any questions so far about that? Okay, so let me um, have you go through and work through a problem um, on page 383, uh, question 23. And then um, on the next page, do 26 and 27. So today do three problems on page 383, do question 23. And then on the next page, do questions 26 and 27. So actually for today, um, on question 23, just do A and B. We didn't go through how to do C and D. So we're gonna do that tomorrow. Um, today, just do A and B on question 23 and then do questions 26 and 27.